Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nartaki.com's series, Jalak. A first glance, a look at new ideas, new creative endeavors in all kinds of spheres. They can be books, poetry, painting, and of course, the live arts. Today, our edition focuses on Maya Dance Theatre, Kavita Krishnan and her wonderful team at, from Singapore. Now, Kavita has been working quite seriously in very non-glamorous areas. Kavita and I share a Bharatanatyam guru, Neela Satilingam, the marvelous, marvelous dance teacher and artist who made a very deep impression on my life and I know on Kavita's too. Today, we're going to talk about Maya, Maya's new um, premiere. Actually, it's part of a five-part series, and we're going to talk about the fourth installment. Now, the series is called Pancha, Less and Lesser. What does it mean? For those of you who are conversant with Indian Vedic traditions, you know, Pancha would automatically connote Pancha Bhuta, the five elements. You won't be very wrong, because it is the five elements that has sort of been the overarching umbrella or the guiding force, maybe, or the, or the inspiration between the five chapters. We're going to talk about chapter four. That's going to premiere very soon. And to tell us about this is artistic director Kavita Krishnan. And here she is. Welcome, Kavita. Thank you, Akka. Uh, Panchar is a concept idea that was given to me by the company's producer, Imran Manaf, who's with us today. Uh, we wanted to create a series of work, uh, as you said, uh, using the Pancha Buddhas, the five nature's elements, and to draw inspiration from them to create a space for female archetypes to then bring a social story or a social message. So it's art making for social cause. That's the whole idea uh, through which Maya Dance Theatre travels uh, in this art making process. So Pancha One was created to talk about grieving mothers. Um, it was a very short experience that I uh, had in Istanbul and I was very disturbed by uh, the children who were actually from Syria who were begging in the streets of Istanbul. And my, my heart automatically went to parents who lose them because of war or any means. And then so I came back to then create a work uh, that brought Gandhari alive who lost a hundred sons and she could only know about their demise through the wind god, Bayu. And so I was looking at the grief of a mother. From there, we moved on to then do Pancha II, uh, which was a discourse between Sita and Joan of Arc, both of whom were contesting the presence of fire in their lives. So fire represented uh, the you know, uh, patriarchal system. Uh, the one that actually scalds you and burns you, but if it could have a flame from it that nurtures us, then we are able to move further and move on. And so I felt that these two women um, will serve the needs of this pancha to enable us to have a, a movement to walk towards finding patriarchal systems to be more nurturing for everyone. Uh, that was number two. And then number three looked uh, mainly at um, domestic violence, particularly sexual violence in domestic um, homes, in homes. And a home is supposed to be a safe space. So for home, my element was earth. I sort of transported earth to become home. And uh, with the permission of uh, a case study, which is Devika Panikar, uh, a true case study of a young girl who was sexually abused by a family member, a uh, family friend indeed, from the age of three all the way up to six. And um, she one day just wrote her story on the Facebook that, con that connected me with her. I seeked her permission to then walk through the story. It took me about two years to be brave enough to also address the story for myself as a creator. And then we uh, expounded the story of sexual abuse, not just from Singapore's front, but also from our neighboring country, Indonesia, because I had collaborators from Indonesia performing with me. And hence, they also brought uh, um, real moments that they had experienced into the project. So Pancha for the fourth chapter is looking at ether uh, in relation to space and time. 
So uh, ether is something that which um, for me is society. So I'm looking at in terms of society, where is the place for seniors? Do the old meet the young? Do the young value the old? And do we together are able to create this bond to then keep ourselves within the society in a positive, encouraging way? So that's what Pancha 4 is all about. And we have two seniors who are uh, performing with us. It's your debut performance, Shabira and Dexter. Shabira is 74, Dexter is 80. Thus far, it has been such an interesting journey for us to walk with them. We also have, uh, we have four chapters in Pancha 4. So chapter one and two has Shabira and Dexter. Chapter three, we have uh, Death of an Artist, which is we are taking the uh, poems of late poet, Tamil poet, Mr. Parini Velu, and we have translated those poems with the help of uh, scriptwriter Hemang. And we are then using the poems to drive us into this topic of uh, very much looking at the blessings of grandparents. Thank you. It's, uh, it's something that is happening around us and we don't pay attention to it. Our seniors and aging, there is a term now called ageism. So mm -hmm. I think I want to move on to a uh, collaborating performer, Sebastian Tan. Sebastian, tell me, what is your role in Pancha 4? Um, so for myself, um, I'm a performer and uh, a co-actor and collaborator in the space of Pancha 4. So for, for my part of the, the whole production, I'm working with the senior, um, Dexter, who is 80 years old this year. And um, both of us are uh, performing together to share about not just Dexter's story, but also the legacy that he wants to leave behind and the messages that we really believe in together. So, you know, in this process, it was, it was very, very special because uh, Dexter is his first time performing and myself I come from a dancer background and we're kind of meeting in the middle this time and because of that rehearsals take on a very very different form. So you have a background in Bharatanatyam and street dance and you, you say Dexter's first time performing on stage so yeah. did you start with just sitting down on two chairs and just sort of talking and did you start the movement seated did you ask him to first sort of move his hands or just tell us what the initial process was like. Yes, so in fact, um, it, it did start from just chats, simply chats. Because what we figured was that as much as we were very excited to move, you know, I was very excited to share um, how I could physicalize through Bharatanatyam and contemporary movements, um, his story, his, uh, his messages, and what I, I, I interpret from it as well. But we had to pull back a little bit and kind of meet in the middle as people first to understand each other's um, uh, stories and where we are coming from. And then at the same time, also understanding what is the value that both of us as co-actors bring to the space. So for myself, it's definitely the physicalization of these, um, uh, these stories. And for Dexter, he prefers to share with text and he might be moving a little bit uh, through the space. So then it developed from there uh, to where he started to try out some movements uh, it could be climbing through the chairs, climbing on top of chairs. And then I even started to share more about text, even though I'm a dancer, you see. So there's a lot of um, give and take, a lot of listening, a lot of empathy, where we understand each other's uh, limitations and capabilities at the same time to come together to share this piece. So do you have elders at home, Sebastian? Did, it, did, did you have a new understanding of what it means to grow older? Yes, um, it, it's very, very special because um, while well, my family, we don't live with our um, grandparents and generally I don't have a lot of interaction with, uh, with older persons. And I think this production really, really made me reflect on um, in the first place, why is that happening? Why is that distance happening? And how can I make it less and lesser? Um, and of course, it definitely empowered me as a younger person to be able to um, interact and understand and give the space for a senior so that we can share an activity together, something as simple as a chat. So I think it was very eye-opening for me in that sense. And also it breaks a lot of expectations about, you know, what can a senior do or what can a senior not do? And why are we um, imposing on their space? What can we allow for them to, to, to do and to say? So now, uh, Lalit, I'm moving on to you. You're the composer and... Uh... You have a background in Hindustani classical, but you've built on other kinds of mm -hmm. impulses and inspirations. You're now sort of a world music, electro, 
you know, you've, you've done so much. You've also uh, created music for, for dance, for dancers, classical dancers. But this time, uh, this is your first time working with mm -hmm. Maya Dance. And it's such a different subject, right? It's not about beauty and harmony or an aesthetics that, that perhaps you have worked with uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. What was it like? What was the listening process about the project? And what was the kind of sound? I don't even want to call it music now. It's like a sound design. Mm -hmm. What was it that came to your mind as this, as this project was given to you? Hi, Anita. Um, I, I think you uh, got it absolutely spot on when you mentioned the sound design element of it. Uh, as you rightfully also said, this is my first time working with Kavita and Maya, and it's been a very, very uh, intriguing and interesting experience. Uh, I say these two words because intriguing because the processes, the creative processes are so different. Uh, interesting also because I can dive in a little bit more into myself and into the energy of all those uh, other artists in the space uh, for the creative process. Um, so to, to maybe I can touch on this a little bit more. Um, so th the music creation process, it's really hard to say that I am the music composer or producer for this. It's, it's, I find that a bit challenging to put into words only because of um, it's really like a mirror image because um, we, it's such a dynamic creation process where we're sitting in the studio with the dancers, the, the movers, the dancers, and Kavita, who's overseeing the whole creative process. And everybody is just feeding energy into everyone else in this. And um, it's been it's been int actually interesting how much of the work that has happened as sketches, I would call it ab abstract sketches during these sessions, um, and how much of cross questions and cross conversations this during this process that happens has actually informed the real score of the piece. Um, and that way, it's hard to say I'm the composer and it's been really interesting in that process for me as well. What kind of instruments did you use or what kind of elements have you brought? Um, for this, um, uh, as, as I was mentioning earlier to you as well, I think it's hard to say for me in the compositional process that I'm coming from a particular style or genre or, you know, um, specific tradition, because I prefer to think of style or genre as a tool, really just to serve a narrative. And for this process, the narrative uh, the, of the music comes from the story itself, whereby the movement of the people, the 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 activities that happen during um, the dance or the movements or the narration of the poems. So all these have factored in into the sound uh, design element. And in terms of style or instruments, there have been voice. Voice has been a big uh, layer be, um, to underpin the entire score. Also because it's the voice of two artists coming and intermingling with one another with a um, with universal ether energy that like what Kavita was mentioning earlier, just gluing the whole thing together. So I've tried to go about this, trying to give characters a voice as uh, along with my own as well, and to see how this sits. And sometimes it sits well, sometimes it doesn't sit too well. And then Kavita is always giving her watchful eye and coming and saying, hey, Lalit, this works. You know, I'm imagining these things. Um, actually, for this, I hear metal sounds. Or no, I hear a completely different sound. Oh, no, maybe maybe you've gotten like 10% right in this. So uh, it's been such a dynamic process in this. Um, and that's really the best way I can coin it uh, in musically, really. I think that if you're know, taking off from the idea of less and lesser, Mm -hmm. I like the idea of sound design that is so minimal that allows the actors or the performers to actually add to it in terms of a visual movement design. Sometimes in Indian dance traditions, the, the sound or the music score becomes so overpowering that the dancer just ends up responding to the music. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the music becomes the main thing and without the music, mm -hmm. you don't have the dance. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so drawn to the idea of sound design, which is a, uh, which is a kind of way I've been working for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. I'm moving now to the producer, Imran. Imran, that this is not just the stage performance. There's a, there's a whole experience that is designed around Pancha chapter four. Would you tell us about that, please? Yes, uh, Pancha 4, uh, Less and Lesser, is actually designed as a digital experience for audiences. So apart from the production, which was mentioned early, we do have an interactive video element, 
where audience can meet Dexter online and hear his stories and they can decide whether they want to go to hear story A, B or whatever. And then at the end of it, there will be a video live interview on Facebook at a specific date at a specific time. And apart from that, we are also working with seniors to take photos of how they see the world through their eyes. Um, so what happens, the photos will be guided by a workshop and thereafter, you know, they're let loose to take photos of whatever they think means to them at the current age that they are. It'll be exhibited on digitally on the website and also live with the library. And third thing, we do have a music performance that we are working with another musician where he's talking about his grandmother and he's creating music for performance while working with a digital artist. So it'll be a short music performance about seven minutes long and they'll be online as well. Yeah, and also we have a dance film, which we have submitted for Singapore International Festival of Arts. We'll cross our fingers that it all works out well. And that will be featured with uh, the women's story which Kavita mentioned about as well. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Imran. I'm going back to Kavita. Kavita, is this, is this a question is kind of personal, I suppose, because one of the seniors you're working with is your mother-in-law. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so tell me how, how that has turned out. Uh, was he excited about it? Uh, this is, uh, so uh, how is that? How did that happen? Uh, so be, prior to this uh, journey itself, just zooming into the production itself, um, I call her Shabira because uh, we wanted to establish that she's a performer. Yeah. And um, uh, so she joined us and de texted and she joined us to do uh, this uh, creative movements for seniors. So it's called se uh, movement for uh, by seniors for seniors during the circuit breaker period we created because we felt that some seniors were in the nursing homes may not have access to social uh, interactions and the isolation sets in. And so we made these videos and we sent it up to them so they can then practice this in the nursing homes. It's a way of giving back. And at that time, um, I just asked her, would you like to walk further into this production we have? And I think she didn't know what she was getting herself into. So she thought, oh, it's gonna be just come there and move and just share and be happy. As she walked herself further into the subject, we then probed to her to ask her if she want to share a little bit of her personal stories, her own stories, because she's very interesting. You know, she, her mom is Chinese and her father is uh, Kerala Indian. And so the coming together of two different cultures and um, she growing up in a very strict Muslim home, and how does dance mean to her? What does it mean to her? Could she do it? Were there things that she couldn't do? So these are the topics that we discussed about. And uh, because I hold a relationship with her and she, I think, trust me enough to share. So she always calls me her friend. And so she found it easier for me to then chat with her about her stories. And then we brought it into a production. So initially she found it very difficult because um, she felt that she needed a structure. She needed to be guided how she needs to walk, how she needs to sit, what she needs to say and so on and so forth. Uh, she was looking for a frame. But my way of working and diving is that I just it from you. So basically you bring everything to that space and you craft the space together with all the collaborators. And hence, um, that was a challenge for her. Sometimes I didn't know whether I was supposed to wear the hat of a daughter-in-law or should I then wear the hat of a director? Um, so I was always in conflict, but Eva Te, who dances with her and who creates this piece with her, She's extremely very patient. Um, she'll comfort her down and um, she will walk her through the sounds. So it made it easy for her to then realize that we are all in this together. And um, there are times where she, I mean, I'm a little bit harsh and I say, auntie, you know, I'm so sorry if I have been harsh. And then she says, no, no, it's okay. It's part of the work. Well, I'm a performer. I need to listen and I need to try. And now what's happening is whenever we go to meet her on weekends, we, we do a little walk and she then you know, goes through the text with me and she says, uh, do you think I'm doing it well? So she wants to be a nice performer for herself. I think she has been deprived of being performing to be able to express herself when she was younger. So this journey has given her a purpose. 
to then revisit her bucket list. And one of her bucket list was to dance. And she's also learning to uh, ride the bicycle because uh, when she was riding the bicycle previously, her mom used to walk around with a cane. We call it the rotan. And she used to like, you know, run around and saying that girls should not do this. Girls can't do this, can't, you know, do lots of things. And, and she just said today, her daughter gave her permission to go and learn how to do, ride the bicycle. So she's learning how to ride the bicycle um, as she's learning to also enter this creative space with us. So has it been easy, Akka? No, I have been having guilt treatments myself. You know, sometimes I ask, am I too harsh? I'll ask Raga, who's a music composer of the work. Raga, do you think I'm being too harsh in the way I'm giving feedback to auntie? And, you know, he will give me that look and he said, I don't know, Akka, we should ask her now. <laughs> yeah, so it's been difficult, but it's been extremely rewarding. Uh, learning a lot. You know, like I've always told you, I've, I've watched you and I've grown seeing a lot of things that you do that has inspired my space a lot more than what you can imagine. I remember Tara when you did, long before when I came to watch you present Tara. It's been sitting in my mind, like who's Tara? Why is Tara today so strongly there for me? And I go bring it back to Anita Ratnam. So I don't want to invent the wheel. I just want to be able to know that there's seniors who have taken this forward and from where they have left us, what can we do? When we reimagine it, it'll be different. Yet, it is not something original. It comes from somewhere. So Pancha has been of that value to me. So I want to just uh, come back to Imran because this is your mother we're talking about, right Imran? Yes, yes, yes she is. Have yes. You, are you seeing her in a new light? Do you appreciate her more now? Um, while growing up with her, I noticed that she has a lot of capabilities, a lot of things that she wanted to do, but maybe becoming a wife, become a mother, she had to put those aside and concentrate on things that she wants. So in a nutshell, I'm happy she's doing all the things that she couldn't do when she's younger. And for me, it's an inspiration. You know, I remember asking her once that, I think it was like a few years back, uh, do you want to do all the things that you want to do? And she told me, is, I never thought about that. So hopefully that question was an impetus for her to move on to do all the things that she wanted to do before, you know, before she's time for her to go. So I'm happy she's doing all the things she wanted to do. You know, this is just something I wanted to share with all of you many years uh, ago, I mean, in Victorian England and everywhere, to, to discourage women from learning how to ride the bicycle. They would say women can only wear skirts, but it's really hard to ride a bus bicycle wearing a long skirt. And now one of the vital trainings for young women, especially those in women's organizations in India, is to train young girls to ride the bicycle, because if you know that, you can get away from a physical uh, space of danger rather than run. You can actually get onto a bicycle and, you know, escape. Wow. So times have changed and the bicycle still is a very powerful symbol, you know, at least in, in Asia, you know? So I think that's quite interesting. But my next question uh, can be taken by anybody. And it is like, we don't think of Singapore as a country where seniors really retire to. This is a country where people go to stake their fortunes, make money, make their dreams come true. And um, now more than ever, as it seems like the West is crumbling, Singapore has become such a desired destination for many people and a safe destination. Do you think uh, that the Singapore uh, society and the government should pay much more attention to the aging population of seniors who are now either at home with their families or in homes, in senior homes? Is this going to be a problem? Is this going to be something that's going to happen because it's becoming a problem in many countries? I was about to share something as well. So um, maybe if I just go from a personal experience, uh, recently the topic about retirement um, came up with my dad, you know, He's been, he's been working like, you know, most of his life, taking actually more than one job. And when the topic of retirement comes about, there's a lot of anxiety that comes along with it. And I think it's true for many, many um, uh, seniors. You know, it's, it's, it's such a big part of your identity. 
and it makes up um it almost defines what how you are valued as a person in society and i think letting go of um the idea of a, a job kind of puts you in this empty space and suddenly you're just left to fend for yourself and i think that's one area that we really have to be um, aware of and try to do something about because then if you just leave someone stranded and and they, they don't find that identity for themselves anymore they don't have um, sometimes even at a later age they don't have the social circles to even um, talk to other people as well so then how do we continue that identity building even as we age how do we still help people to understand that um, you are valued uh, where, where, uh, uh, how can you still contribute in, in many different ways, whether it's to inform someone about the roots of your family in terms of cu in the cultural aspect, or even just to, to contribute in, in, in many, many other, other, other ways. So I think that's the that idea of uh, identity and value as aging comes along is something that we don't talk about enough, and there should be a lot more awareness um, about it as well. I think there's also something that we tend to overlook. We tend to overlook wisdom that comes with age. Mm. And we tend to not want to listen to our elders as much now that we don't live in intergenerational family systems, even in India. And India has, I think, the world's uh, largest young population. We have 50% at 25 and under. But we also have a very large aging population. You know, when I lived in the United States, there was special funding put aside for all dance companies and arts organizations to go into senior homes to actually sing or dance or paint or get seniors involved or just have them watch. Um, I know funding has been cut, but now you just see a lot of seniors just watching television and playing board games amongst themselves. And it's, it's quite heartbreaking, you know, uh, to know that uh, their children are living somewhere else, uh, have a very successful life. They just send money back, you know, to take care of them. But they, but I think they need the interaction. They need interaction from the outside world, and especially from younger people. So, uh, Kavita and Imran, my question to you is: Is there uh, is there funding now being looked at um, at least seriously for this kind of activity in Singapore? They do have pockets of money around for activities that deal with seniors. Uh, but they are more of leisure activities. For example, dance programs, dance for health for seniors. Um, I remember they had one for sports for seniors. So there, there is money. Uh, but for the art scene, yes, we do have. But I guess... You know, most of the bulk of money will be going to somewhere else. Maybe healthcare for seniors, hospitalization, medical, et cetera, et cetera. So the money is not, it's not a lot as compared to the other sectors. Yeah. But just to add, the Silver Arts Festival that is organized by the National Arts Council, uh, this is a movement that they have uh, taken uh, definitely with the mindset of making um, the art and culture accessible to seniors and to invite seniors to perform or to just engage in learning new artistic skills. Um, it has been very successful. Uh, we just ended the Silver Arts Festival. We, we, in fact, we are in through the Silver Arts Festival uh, that is happening now. Uh, and most of the works have also gone digital. So this year they are also encouraging the seniors to understand the digital sphere and how could they then um, work with professionals to um, engage in this space to keep themselves active. But just to take a little bit from what Sebastian said, there's also this group of active seniors who are retiring. So um, they, they have their two types. There's one type that actually retires and they want to go back to employment because they are afraid that their social circle is reducing and their capabilities may not be a value add if they are going to be staying back at home, they want to return. Then there's also the other group of these active seniors who feel that I'm okay to be alone, but just don't leave me alone. So means that they know how to manage isolation, social isolation. They, they are happy to enjoy the retirement period. And at the same time in pockets, 
they are then uh, weaving through their time in engaging with the society or with their friends. So we have these two uh, groups of uh, seniors with us. The bulk of the seniors are also the very um, frail seniors who are taken care in nursing homes. And we have a very small community of seniors who are currently now facing uh, challenges in terms of uh, daily living because of uh, many reasons. You know, they, they have not had good savings. Uh, and, and then you know, their, their children have also left. And so the, the, there's two things that they are dealing with. Uh, so, so it's the reducing of the social space and the reducing of the funds as well. But the Singapore government has definitely been looking at this topic of seniors very actively. So we are a little safe, but I think it's the society. We are talking about how is the society, how is you and I, the citizens, handling the seniors in our space? Are we, uh, in, are we encouraging them to share the space? Are we, as you and everyone has said here, giving time to listen to their, their not just their difficulties, but their aspirations, their dreams? So these are the questions that which I think it's nice to ask. What are you hoping that people will leave with after they see Pancha chapter four? I'm just hoping that if they see Dexter and Sebastian, that they would want to go and pick up the phone and say hello to their grandpa uh, or to a senior father, uh, parents who's um, not with them in the same uh, home. Uh, if they see uh, Shabira, they would then allow their mom to sit down and ask, is there something that you want to do? Can I do it with you? Uh, encouraging them to then complete the bucket list. And if they do see chapter three, where Lalith is actually uh, working with us, uh, death of an artist, uh, the inspiration that comes, the blessings that comes from grandparents' space, uh, where they have they left something back for us, like how the poems of Mr. Late Barani Velu is now being translated by his grandson himself, because he feels that the poems have value and they remain in Tamil. They don't reach a larger community. I want to then translate them so that I can then pass it on to another community to be inspired. Um, so is there something grandparents have left behind that which we can treasure beyond treasure? Can we share it? So it is this entire space of ether of sharing space and time with our seniors. And as you have nailed it, the wisdom, what can we take away back and do with the wisdom that they leave behind for us? And not to celebrate them when they are gone, but to celebrate them when they're with us. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you all, Imran, Lalit, and Sebastian. I look forward to seeing excerpts of Pancha 4. And I know that this conversation has already had several short videos of the process, which is really what Jalak is about. I also look forward to Kavita Pancha 5, because that's a topic very close to my heart. Single mothers, maybe. Uh, and uh, let's hope that you can come back on this uh, series and talk about that because all that you've done, as I said earlier, tough, um, sort of neglected and certainly unglamorous areas when it comes to art making. But these are very important, very important markers because aging is something that we're all going to be part of. And you young people watching, don't worry, you're, you're going to get old. And those of us who are already middle-aged or in the senior category, we're going to get older. So as, um, you know, nobody needs to be cast away. And I think Pancha episode four, chapter four is going to tell us about what the richness of life, life experience that anybody can bring into a space. And when crafted with care, with uh, artistic director with a producer, a co-performer and uh, music and designer, you can actually have both a life experience and a performance experience. So uh, thank you all once again for joining us. All the very best for Pancha chapter four. All the details will be on the screen about the premiere and the various dates across which the chapters will unfold. So please watch out for it. Those of you who are in Singapore, go watch it, be part of the experience. Those of us who are not, we will hope to get a glance, but at least this time we have a first glance. Thank you so much, Kavita and uh, colleagues. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Adam.